Welcome to Level Up with Winnie Sun. Well, hello, and thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Winnie Sun, your host, and happy Tuesday to you, and welcome to the show. And if you're joining us on the replay, hello, hello. Thank you so much for tuning in, and please include in comments the word replay, so I'll make sure to catch your view. I certainly don't want to miss you. And if you're joining us live, well, hello, welcome to the show. Let's start with the mic works, let you know how everything closed. The Dow closed down 200 points, the NASDAQ closed up 65 points, and then S&P 500 closed down seven points as Congress passes legislation with a $900 billion in COVID-19 relief and a $1.4 trillion to help fund the government through September 30th. Uh, this measure includes, a, as you know, a $300 per week an enhanced unemployment Employment benefit. $284 billion is going to the Paycheck Protection Program for those who are small business owners and the $600 direct stimulus checks, those direct payments uh, for many Americans, and $8 billion for COVID-19 vaccine distribution, among many, many other uh, terms. So the aid comes after a, a lot of talk, actually. We've been waiting for a very long time for uh, our politicians and elected officials to decide on this next package. So we're, you know, it's sort of a, a first step. It's the first step in the right direction. But today I'm very excited and happy to welcome Lori Konish, who, as you know, is a personal finance reporter at CNBC.com. Lori, thank you so much for being here. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Winnie. It's great to see you. Well, you know, it's, it's it's so nice to finally see you in per I mean, I wish I could see you in person and we could get together <laughs> and I could be on the East Coast, but certainly a very challenging time. But first of all, I just want to start and just say thank you for all that you've done, because I know um, you and the team, they've been working so hard to keep us updated on what's been happening with the financial markets during this pandemic. Um, I'm sure how, how has life changed for you, Lori? It has been a crazy year, as it has been for everyone. Um, one of the big things we've been focusing on is the stimulus negotiations, and that has been something that has dominated our coverage since the spring. Obviously, a lot of people are unemployed. If they're not unemployed, many have you know, had their incomes drop unexpectedly. And so this has been something we've been focused on, and it's, it's great to see that Congress is finally has a deal coming and that you know, more help is on the way. Agree, agree. I think, um, it, I, I think it was probably very much long overdue. That so many people could use no, more help. I know you and I both um, would love to see there be more assistance, but unfortunately, you and I are not the people that make that decision, are we? No, <laughs> that is true. We, unfortunately, we can't. And I know many of you who are watching were also watching with us and reading along and waiting for that information since spring. There's been so many discussions. But today, you know, something that we really want to talk about is to sort of get you ahead for the new year, because 2021 is just around the corner. And what we love to do is help you, give you some, maybe some tips some advice to get you so that you have more financial clarity going to the new year. It's a very different time for sure. Um, during the beginning of the year, you know, a lot of people are focused on losing weight, they're focused on getting healthy, they're looking for other goals. But a big part of, of, of for many of us, as for every New Year's resolution, is to, to start the year off a little bit more financially strong. And so I've asked Lori to join us for this because we love to talk about some of those fundamentals that a lot of people are interested in, which is, you know, things like budgeting, things about like clarity of your financial picture and, uh, and just putting together um, some steps to, to help you, you know, reach those financial goals. Obviously, um, Lord, we know that many people are, are in different situations. There's so, there are so many Americans, over 20 million, as you've reported to, that are, continue to be unemployed, who are now looking forward to obviously getting that enhanced unemployment benefit from the federal government and hopefully getting back to normal. But until that point, right, um, we do know that um, there's still some things that um, for those, there's still a lot of Americans out there um, 
that are still working, right? And still have those concerns and are still worried about things that they can do now to help better themselves and their families prepare for the future. So I'd love to sort of talk about budgeting, if you will, and start with that. Um, Talk about New Year's. When you think about New Year's, for people who still have income, right, but are really worried about what could happen in the future, how do you even put that into the budget or, or do you not? For me, I think it's like this year has been such a game changer in how we all live, right? I mean, we are all going through different changes, but one of the big things is how we spend has changed. And it's kind of a great time to recap, take a look at what you've been through this year, how your spending has changed, maybe where you pared back on some things that you used to spend on, where you've spent more and how that feels to you. When things uh, return to normal, where do you want to see your money go in a way that feels good to you? So maybe that's more spending in, you know, for areas that are, that bring you joy, or maybe that's more saving so that you feel less anxiety about the future. It's definitely a time to, you know, come back to what what really works for you. Yeah, I think that's true. And I'm glad that you say that because everybody is in a different situation. I mean, I think we, we're in agreement on that. If, if 2020 has taught us anything, it's just how uh, very different um, all all of us are in, in different stages that we're at. But the consistent thing is everybody is struggling in their own way, whether it be financially, whether it be mentally, whether it be health wise. But I think what we've learned is the importance of having grace during this time and, um, and also having your own approach to how you manage your spending. And so I think that was important what you said, you know, What's important to you? How can we reduce anxiety, but still have sort of a plan in place? So, you know, this might not be applicable to every one of you watching, and we we both recognize that. Um, and Lori and I have had conversations about this, but for those of you who um, are looking for some easy ways to implement, Lori, do you have some tips if you're, you know, you're just starting off and you're like, maybe, you know, you, maybe you just graduated from college or maybe, you know, you're, you're at your first job and you want to make sure that you have a good fundamental um, strategy to handling budgeting. What would you say? I would say start with automating your savings. Um, that's one thing that, you know, if you don't even see the money when it lands into your bank account and it's already being put aside, that's just an automatic habit. It's a lot harder to do after um, you already see the paycheck and think of all the things that you need to, um, the bills you need to pay or things that you, other things you wanna do. So that's a great place to start. And if you are able to set aside money towards retirement. That is a goal that is really important, particularly if you know, you're know you just starting out at a new job and there's a company match, you don't wanna give that up. Um, you know, Even investing in a Roth IRA, that's post-tax money, but it's still, you know, it could be a de facto emergency savings. So it's, you know, getting those healthy financial habits in order so that you know your future self will be thanking you if you need to you know tap those funds for whatever reason yeah absolutely you know i think you know this pandemic has really been an eye-opening experience for so many of us because i know many people never expected to um not be able to go to work right now like you and i are both working from home like I think we never expected to not be able to go in the office safely because, and to be fearful of something that we can't see, right? Um, so this was definitely an experience that many of us didn't anticipate and certainly very difficult to put into the overall budget because we, have, we really haven't gone through this process. But I agree with you, if you can automate that savings, it does take you out of the picture of having to remember to save. So. If you are in a position to save, that is a great strategy. We've seen that with your 401k at work. And like Lori mentioned too, if if you still have that company matching at work, don't discount how powerful that is for your future retirement savings. Now we do know um, that there's been a lot of companies that have had to, because of the pandemic, 
decrease or do away with that company matching. And so that might make your decision um, more challenging. But I would say, and I, I think Lori, I'm gonna guess you, you would feel this way too. If, if you are in a position of an ability to save for your 401k, even without the match, the tax advantages make it so that it's worthy of your consideration. Would you agree? I would agree, definitely. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's your future self and it's harder to catch up the longer you wait to do it. Um, so we often see numbers of, you know, if you start when you're in your 20s versus your 30s versus your 40s, et cetera, it, the more you have to invest um, in order to catch up. But it's also like if you start earlier, you have that compounding interest, that time on your side. So it just it's, it makes life easier for you if you can do it. I realize that a lot of people are grappling with unemployment, with student loans, with other competing priorities, and that can make it difficult. But, um, you know, having a strategy for how to juggle that all without neglecting your savings is really important. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's interesting because th these sort of fundamentals are important regardless of you know where you are. But this year is so different, right, Lori? I mean, there's so much that we didn't expect that's pulling against sort of those basic financial principles that we all need to try to, you know, keep up with. But this year is really different. And I, I don't know, I think we've, we've talked a lot about this, you and I, but like the importance of um, being forgiving to yourself, you know, if you're not able to save this year, it's okay. If you can't, you know, if you can't do the things that um, you feel like you're falling behind, don't feel that way if you can, but know that, um, everybody understands and, 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 and more importantly, there will be when you're ready to invest, when you're able to save, these vehicles will be available to you, but don't feel like, uh, Lori and I both, I think, um, you're an audience. I can see that both of us are not saying that you have to save this year or do you have to invest this year? In fact, it's not even this year, but anytime, but you know, it has to it has to make sense for you, and has to be comfortable for you, and it, it can't um, create financial anxiety for you. You have to be in a good state of mind in order to start this this process, right? <clears throat> so, you know, Lori, obviously, you've talked to a lot of people during this time too. What has been your sense? Um, are people um, do you, do you find people to be very much varied in their experiences right now? Or do you feel, do you, are there some common themes that you've been hearing? I think it's really a mix. And we've seen so many different things going on in the economy, right? I mean, there's people who are working from home and they've sort of been just cooped up, but their income hasn't changed versus others who really have had the floor pulled out from underneath them amid this pandemic with you know, worries about keeping a roof over their heads or, you know, uh, where they're going to find their next job. So it's really a mix of things that are happening. And I think it's just a reminder, it's the holiday season for all of us to just stay aware and be empathetic to what someone else might be going through. Um, because I think we don't always want to share, you know, um, financial struggles. It's mm -hmm. kind of something that people don't talk about readily, but it impacts your whole life. And it can feel like there's a lot of pressure around holiday time to act like there's nothing wrong. But I think there's no um, shame in, you know, celebrating holidays a little differently this year and really just having a sense of gratitude for, you know, having come through as much as we have. Absolutely. And I, and I love that you said that because I do think that we've all gone through this in our own ways, right? I even take a look at my kids, my kids downstairs and, you know, they haven't seen their friends in so long. They haven't been able to see grandma, grandpa in so long. They, they, they're even scared of going sometimes to the backyard um, because that, you know, as a young child, you don't understand what you can't see. You don't understand what COVID is. And you don't understand why when we do go out, some people wear masks and some people don't wear masks. And um, you feel a real sense of insecurity, right? Um, but, and then you, you add that in with like the holidays and, and how, how different that has been for so many of us. 
it's a lot. I mean, how are you doing? Are you are you okay? <laughs> I'm okay. I am cooped up in my apartment and, you know, um, I'm used to going to the office. What you said really resonated with me. I never would have thought, I never thought I was a work from home person. And you had to become one this year if you were lucky enough to still be employed. So it's, um, you know, we're all living in different situations and adjusting. And there's a lot of stresses out there, whether it's, you know, you mentioned being afraid even to go into your backyard. And that's a reality for a lot of us as we try to absorb so much more information. Um, you know, it's it's great to work in an area where I'm part of, you know, learning that information and sharing it with people. I think it's been so vital this year. But it's also good to take time to reconnect with people you know, wherever you can. And I think that's, regardless of your situation, one of the you know most important things to keep doing right now. I love that. And so, you know, one thing I've noticed too, Laurie, is like sometimes you need positivity to, to sort of balance out the negativity in your life, right? And so, I mean, I, I'll tell you, I am so grateful to, to know you and call you a friend. And, and I, I love what you and the team do at CNBC. And it's, and, I, and it's important work. It really is. And it sometimes, you know, sometimes it can be polarizing. And I know that having worked with the team at CNBC for this many years, like, it's some of the nicest, kindest people um, work. Uh, and, and, and Lori is definitely at the top of that list. So, um, let me tell you, let me ask you this, because I want to say, I just want to say how grateful I am to you and the team at CNBC. It's just been, oh, thank you. Yeah. I wish I had this information when my parents, I mean, I'm sure if my parents were, had CNBC in their life when they went through financial bankruptcy and when, you know, like I like was barely making it through college. I think a lot of the lessons that you're sharing now are things that I'm teaching my kids now. So I, I think it's great. I think it's hard to hear. These are hard lessons. What we're going through the pandemic, what we're going through financial wise, for other, for some, it's much harder than others. I, I think that absolutely is, is the truth. Um, but that being said, I think um, there, hopefully we all can see some silver linings in this experience. Let me ask you this, because I think we gotta talk, we gotta change this up a little bit. Especially those <laughs> who are watching, if you're, um, if you have something to be grateful for, I'd love to hear from you as well, because I do think this is a really tough time. I know um, Laura and I, you know, it's been it's been a lot. It's been a lot. Um, certainly, uh, like we never thought we would be working from home. And we certainly, um, there's a lot of things that we would change our situation. I know many of you watching feel the same way, but it sort of is what it is, right? It, it, it really is. Laura, what are you grateful for this year? Definitely my friends and family and also my health. I think that's not something that I, I always appreciated that, but not something I appreciated as much until this year to wake up and, you know, feel okay, you know, every day, God willing, is, you know, so important. I think, you know, I was seeing people make comments on social media about how they do their smell and taste tests regularly to make sure that they you know, don't have COVID. It's something that we're living with day by day. And, you know, it's, um, it's important to celebrate when, you know, you're feeling well. Mm -hmm. That is so true. Yeah, it's so true. I have, um, I have several family members um, who have had COVID. And um, I have friends who have lost fathers and mothers and, and um, family members during COVID. So this, this is like, this this has not been easy and i know you feel that way too like some days you just like don't even want to wake up um, and and just want to like you know you just want to turn off everything but you know i guess that's that's not the way we we i i'll tell you lord this actually you know the like last few few weeks have been pretty tough but like one of my friends sent me this care package right and it it's it's interesting how quickly good can can um, balance out the, the the bad days, right? So for sure, I mean, I think that's what we should talk about a little bit too. You know, let's just go forward. Let's let's talk about the new year. Um, one thing that I will say, 
for many people who are maybe, you know, you're just like, okay, 2021, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know when I'm going to get my vaccine. I don't know when I'm going to get back to work. But what are some things that I can do to maybe make myself feel a little bit better financially? I do think a lot of this is sort of um, the reality is the simple answer would be if my bank account started, you know, going higher up, I would feel better. Lori, do you have any um, insight or tips on that? Yeah, I mean, I think if you are able to come up with some financial goals, of, you know, take stock of where you are now and then, you know, where you want to be in 2021 when the year ends. Um, I think, you know, we're talking to people who are in various situations, but you know, when you get that first paycheck, when you get a job after being unemployed for a long time, or, you know, um, if you have been home and able to save, it's really thinking about taking a step back and thinking about what, what can I do with my money and what, what value does it have for me um, after you've worked so hard to earn it. Uh, it's also a time when we need to remember to recognize others. So, you know, if you're fortunate, how can you give back? Um, because I think it, it really is important as, as you value your money for yourself to help other people as well. Yeah, I think that's a great reminder. I think the those of you who are in a position to help, um, certainly this is a year to do it more than ever. So that's something that my team and I, we've been discussing quite a bit too. Um, you know, one thing that there's been a lot of mention of that I, I love to get your take on too is, you know, some of the most priceless holiday memories are often not are often not expensive. Because if you look back to your past holidays, and I've done this for with several people on this show as well as clients, and tell me about your most priceless holiday, like priceless memory, I should say, not priceless, priceless memory. And when I think back, I think about when I was a kid, and we didn't have a lot of money, but I remember my dad would you know, put us in the station wagon and we would drive um, to the Big Bear Mountains here in Southern California. And you had to drive like three hours and then we would get to play in the snow. And, you know, our boots were all like, <laughs> they would get wet because they weren't the best of boots. And, you know, we would, we would slide down the hill in an inner tube that my dad got from a friend um, from his old truck. And it was like, literally we would do that every year. And it was literally my favorite holiday memory even to this day. Um, would you have one one like that, Lori? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny because the holidays evolve and change as your family evolves and changes through the years. I think right now, one of my favorite things is like I have a lot of nieces and nephews and when we're all together, they can sometimes outnumber the adults and just having them run around and laughing around us, um, it's just so much fun. The time together is really fun. So whether it was like visiting family out of state or, you know, and taking a road trip because of that, or um, just staying home. Like I really just, the memories are so warm when I think of us all together. It has nothing to do with, you know, the monetary um, meaning that people sometimes attach to the holidays. And I think, you know, in a year when we're faced with big decisions over how to celebrate the holidays and come together, even if we can't be in person, I think it's like a great time to remember that, what's really important in how we celebrate. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's key. And to give thanks for, you know, sometimes it's wherever, whatever situation we're at, we have a choice of, of making the best of it or making the worst of it. And so hopefully, you know, we, we can come through it trying to make the best of it as, as best we can. You know, it's interesting because um, earlier in the pandemic, because um, as, as you may know, my dad went through a really bad accident. He's been in that hospital. And so he's he's bedridden. And so um, we were actually going to my parents' house and, you know, going to the backyard and, the, and looking at them and making contact between the glass, you know, to say hello and, and whatnot. And... Um, and we would look forward to it and I would bring, you know, my kids, which is their grandkids. And then, but um, one day my mom said, you know what, I think you guys just don't need to come over and we can just do this via FaceTime. And I was like, are you sure? Cause you know, like 
then at least we're sort of in the same space, even though, and then she's like, yeah, yeah. And I, I will tell you, I still think there's a big difference between, you know, doing this via digital versus seeing in, in person. So I'm thinking for this this holiday, I think I'm actually gonna try and do more drive-by visits <laughs> to, to more of our loved ones um, and just try and see more people. I, I just think that there's something different about just being at that moment, right? It's always those little nuances. My mom's gonna be like, oh my goodness, you gained so much COVID weight. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> I can't walk anywhere. <laughs> but I don't know. It is it is what it is, right? Prospect Fire, so great to see you on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining us. Let me ask you this, Lori, because it's it's time to have a little bit of fun. And that means like if, if you've never seen this, it's really fun. It's time for a little bit of speed round where we give you one minute to answer three questions. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. All right, Lori, let's see if you're ready for this. Okay, so this might be helpful, but it may not be helpful, but we want to really know. That is, what is the most memorable holiday dish that you've cooked or you've eaten? It's definitely my mom's turnip puff, which is kind of like a mashed potato kind of side dish that she makes on Thanksgiving, um, made from turnips, and it's definitely a hit in my house. I know you know, she's sometimes given my sister the leftovers and I'm always jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to be able to get some of that this year? I hope so. Yeah. I actually need to learn how to make it myself. Oh, there you go. You know, that's what COVID helps us learn how to cook for sure. Okay. Second question, you know, you are a very distinguished reporter. You get to interview anyone alive or otherwise dead, I guess dead, who, uh, who would you select to talk to? Martin Luther King Jr. Definitely. Um, just such an important historical figure and would love to, you know, just find out more about him. It's hard to pick one person, though. So I have definitely have backups, but <laughs> usually in the historical figure realm. Yeah, I love that. What a great choice. Wonderful. OK. And number three, this is last question. What's a silver lining that has come out of this pandemic for you, Lori? I think learning to be flexible and just doing different things. So normally I'm running and going to the gym and this year I, you know, I have an old bike and I fixed that up and started riding it instead because I felt like I had all of this cabin fever and wanted to really get out safely. And so it's definitely been a time when I've, you know, there's been surprises that have come up in terms of things that I'm doing differently that I wouldn't have done otherwise, I don't think because I've had this time. I love that, you know, it's so true. I think there's definitely been some silver lines. I mean, I just feel like spending, I've actually had so much time just spending time with my kids that I think that's been amazing. Plus, I've been able to cook things I never thought I would ever cook, Lori. <laughs> I mean, I never thought I would be able to bake bread that actually looked like bread. So that was, that was pretty exciting, so. I mean, in, in Asian families, you don't really cook a lot. You don't bake a lot of bread. So this is a really big deal. <laughs> well, I, I love this, Lori. It's been so wonderful. I'm so glad. I know you're so busy right now writing so much articles that are helpful to so many people during this time. So thank you for making the time. And thank you to all of you for tuning in as we meet people who are in the trenches like Lori, who are moving mountains like Lori, getting stuff done. And we're talking trending and sharing real stories that you can use, real financial news that hopefully is helpful. This week is gonna be shorter as we know because the holidays are around, right around the quarter. The market is closed on Friday. So thank you so much for watching, supporting our program and sharing the show with those that you love. So be well, and I can't wait to see you again tomorrow. Take care now.